Thank you for coming today to the World AIDS Day Symposium in Department Q at Aarhus University Hospital in Skybu, Denmark. Uh, my name is Paul Denton. I am one of the associate professors in the Department of Clinical Medicine here at Aarhus University, also a fellow at the Aarhus Institute for Advanced Studies at Aarhus University and researcher in Department Q Division of Infectious Diseases here at the hospital. And today, I want to talk about the HIV puzzle, different aspects of HIV. I want to, to discuss different components of this epidemic and this pandemic and bring them together into um, the end to discuss the trials that we have ongoing here in SkyBoo for HIV cure interventions. I'll talk about the impact of the disease in um, a global sense as well as in an individual sense. I'll talk about the origins, how did the virus get into humans, um, the epigenetics, how's the virus hiding from us or hiding from our immune system, hiding from our therapies in our body, and then a couple of the prominent cure strategies that are being uh, evaluated in clinics and then our trials. First, the impact. <clears throat> I put pictures here because HIV does not infect numbers. HIV infects people. And every number that you hear in any statistic anywhere has a name and a face associated with that number. People are affected by this disease. And I think that's really important to hammer home at the beginning of a talk like this. But it is essential that you understand the magnitude of the problem. So I do have numbers with me. There are 37 million people infected with HIV on the planet. Only approximately 40% of these individuals have access to antiretroviral therapy today. Nearly half of the individuals are women. About 3 million children are infected with HIV. And you don't have to be infected with HIV to be affected by this disease. There's more than 16 million AIDS orphans in Africa alone. Not necessarily infected, but they've lost a parent. It's a devastating disease. <clears throat> but if you're like me, you have a difficult time wrapping your head around such big numbers. So I broke it down into a different strategy here to talk about just today's news on World AIDS Day. What are the, the, the um, effects of this disease? And in fact, just today there's been over 3,000 funerals as a result of HIV. But more importantly, there have been over 5,000 new infections today. So the disease is still spreading. We need to do something about that. Right now, what I want to do is shift our focus to address the question, how does HIV make you sick? <clears throat> there are key players in this drama. The most important is the helper T cell. It's called the helper T cell because it helps other cells do their job in the immune system. We also call it a CD4 cell, um, has to do with a marker on its surface. And helper uh, CD4 cells, as well as other immune cells, come in different flavors. There are naive helper cells, there are memory helper cells, um, there are helper cells that serve specific functions. We'll talk about them in a more global sense here. In addition to helper T cells, there are another type of T cell, the killer T cells, or CD8 T cells. These are the assassin T cells. They just kind of go up to a, something that they need to kill and they just shoot holes in it and blow it up. Natural killer cells in the immune system function in a similar way. <clears throat> Other cells in the immune system, you have plasma cells, the B cells. These are the cells, if you get a vaccine, you, that elicits an antibody response or a humoral response. These are the cells that are going to be making that antibody, pumping it out. You have the big mouths up there, the macrophages. They like to eat stuff. And then you have the dendritic cells, which are constantly sampling their environment and telling the other cells what's in the region and what they uh, may want to think about doing about it. <clears throat> but that's kind of a little bit harder to wrap your head around, I think, than the idea of, of thinking about the immune system in the context of an orchestra or a band. Here you have in an orchestra many different regions 
of the, um, the group, you have the percussion, you have the horns, you have the woodwinds, they all come together looking at their music and they create a song. They, they make an orchestrated response that you can then appreciate. Our immune system is much like this. Our immune system has all these different parts that when they come together in an orchestrated fashion, they actually can do something like defeat a disease. So we have the helper T cells that I mentioned functioning as kind of a conductor in this scenario. So they're kind of telling the other cells what to do. The dendritic cells is music and then the other cells are doing their jobs. Where is this music being made? It's being made throughout your whole body. <clears throat> there are primary, and, uh, primary lymphoid tissues like the thymus and the bone marrow. The thymus is where T cells are growing up. That's why they're called T cells. The B cells grow up in the bone marrow. That's why they're called B cells for bone. And then you have secondary lymphoid tissues like spleen, lymph nodes, and then you have effector sites such as the lungs, liver, uh, the intestines, which also has lymphoid, secondary lymphoid tissue and the peripheral blood, moving things around. This music is all over your body. And then we bring a second player into this drama. We have the virus. So a human immunodeficiency virus comes and infects helper T cells. But how does it get into the body? There are essentially five ways to be infected with HIV. You have vaginal transmission, rectal, penile, intravenous, and mother to child. Of these five, unprotected vaginal intercourse accounts for the majority of infections globally, more than all the other put together. <clears throat> but then how does the virus enter individual cells? I use this as an analogy. Think of a door being on a cell. So this cell is behind that door, the door is on the cell, and the door is that CD4 molecule. The virus is engaging that door, trying to open it and enter. In order to get in a door like this, you have to engage it properly. You first have to identify the door, and then you have to actuate the doorknob in order for things to happen. Well, it turns out that HIV uses both a door and a doorknob to enter CD4 T cells. And if you don't, act, if you don't um, access both of those properly, you don't get in. And it turns out that some people, approximately 1% of Caucasians, have a mutant doorknob. It's called CCR5 Delta 32. It makes their cells resistant to HIV infection. If you have one copy of the CCR5 gene that's mutant, you're called a a Delta 32 heterozygote, and approximately 10% of Caucasians have that genotype. People who are homozygous for this mutation are about 1%. And it was the discovery of this CCR5 mutant that has become the genesis of multiple strategies towards gene therapy and HIV cure. And we'll come back to that um, later in the discussion. <clears throat> so to our band here, when one of these conductors gets infected, you still have other conductors that can help music be generated. But if you don't treat the disease, stop the infection, what ends up happening is your conductors are depleted to the point to where you have all the components to make music as an immune system, but you don't know what to do. It's like a band room with a bunch of little kids, each with their instrument, tooting their horn their own way, but nobody telling them how to address the music together in a coherent fashion and make sound that's pleasing to the ear. That's the distinction between HIV and AIDS. HIV infection is being infected, but AIDS is when your conductors or your CD4 cells have been reduced to a level that you don't have routine, normal immune responses and something can cause you damage that wouldn't ordinarily hurt you, infectious or cancer or otherwise. Antiretroviral therapy is what we have as an approach to counter the virus. And we have very effective antiretroviral therapy available today in the clinic. 
And art is capable of stopping the replication, stopping the virus from making copies of itself. But it does not make the virus go away. The virus is still there. If you take the art away, the virus just comes back and starts to kill the conductor cells again. <clears throat> that is called latency. So if you have an infection and the virus is being produced without therapy there, when you introduce antiretroviral therapy to the situation, then the virus goes into a latent or hiding stage that we'll discuss in more detail. But this is the status quo for HIV therapy today for the 40% of individuals who have access to therapy. It makes it a manageable chronic disease, um, but it's a lifelong commitment to taking this drugs. And now I'd like to just discuss how I perceive the approach that we're taking here in Skyboo towards HIV eradication with my whack-a-mole strategy. So the whack-a-mole approach to HIV cure. Anybody here ever play whack-a-mole in an arcade when you were a kid? Yeah, we have a few. Um, I, I enjoy it. You know, the little mole comes up and you're banging all over trying to hit it. Well, the reason I think of this as, as analogous to HIV cure is you can imagine the virus being latent, the mole under the counter, the mole above the counter is transcriptionally active virus. It's making viral RNA, so it becomes visible to the immune system. And then you have this hammer here that is basically our status quo. It's what can art do? What can our immune system do? What do we have? So basically, everything above the table is what we have today. But where's the latent virus? It's below the table. So how can we come at that latent virus from below the table and make it push itself up to where we can target it with what we have available to us? That's the question, as I perceive it. And when we get further into the talk, we talk about kicking the virus out of hiding. That is basically coming from under the table and trying to cause the latent virus to come up so that it can be whacked. <clears throat> 